and welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. And, and folks will ask, well, well how'd Ken Lane come? Why, why isn't his nursery named Lane Garden Center? My, I married in, I married a Waters. So Harold Waters, 55 years ago, started the very first garden center in northern Arizona here in Prescott. So not in this current location. He was across town by the bowling alley. And uh, Harold had four pretty daughters, and I married his youngest, prettiest daughter, Lisa. And so you'll see here, this is kind of a mom and pop operation, and we have just been doing gardening in the local area for decades, a lifetime, two lifetimes, Harold Waters' lifetime, and now our lifetime. And so we've been practicing what works and what doesn't. And so we want to impart and share that here on the Mountain Gardener each week. And so we're here sharing what's, what's going on. So now we are into the peak of the planting season. We're, we're here. People keep asking, well, uh, people say I should wait until Mother's Day. Yes, but Mother's Day is the demarcation line. That's the, the de defining moment when you start to plant summer plants. So zinnias, tomatoes, uh, marigolds, uh, passion vine or mandevilla, uh, squash, pumpkins. Oh, that's the summer plants. We've been planting since February, spring plants. So uh, pansies and Johnny Jump Pups and, and Dusty Miller and lilacs and forsythia and apple trees and crab apples and uh, red buds. Those have all been going in for months. So don't get confused. Mother's Day is when you start to plant your summer things. Here's the funny thing. This is 100 years of data. We've been measuring the temperatures since the late 1800s. And so this is the 100-year the, the average is May 9th, to be exact, uh, for Prescott. It's, it's a little bit earlier for Prescott Valley. It's a little bit earlier than that for the Verde Valley, uh, uh, Verde River areas, uh, Kingman. It, it's a little later than that for the mountains, the ridgelines, Highland Pines, Timber Ridge, Williams, Flagstaff. And so, but on average, ah, it's the first week in May. Okay, there we go. That's 100 years of data. Now, this year, it's not the norm. We're a little earlier. I think we're about, I don't know, 10, 12 days before Mother's Day. So that's, so that skews that number. So half of those numbers, May 9th is the 100 year average, but half of those years it was, the last frost was back in April, and the other half, it was in the middle of May. But the average is Mother's Day. I, I personally think you could start planting now. It looks like the 14-day forecast is beautiful. It's gorgeous. So I, even, I, even I was tempted this week. I've got most of my tomatoes in. I have a bunch of very frost-sensitive flowers in. Uh, I've got, I've got uh, coleus, a passion vine. I've got geraniums galore. Planted dozens of geraniums this week, and so because that's one of my favorite flowers. And so I'm kind of all in. I've got a few spots open for the really, really wimpy stuff. I didn't quite plant the eggplants. I didn't quite go for the okra. I didn't quite go for zinnias yet because if you even look at those things cold, they die. A basil I've not committed to yet. I'm kind of hold. I've got a few openings, but most of the garden's in. So I figured if there's if that last freak storm comes, yeah, I'll throw a sheet over it and it'll be fine. So that that's that's kind of where we're we're going. So people keep asking this week, Ken, what do you think I should do? Well, I, here's what I did, and so I put I put maybe seventy percent, seventy five percent of all the flowers and vegetables into the ground already containers, raised beds. I still have some room because I'm not done gardening. I like the process of picking the flowers and putting the colors together. And how do I put uh, my prettiest container this year? I put four, I've got a huge, uh, maybe it's two feet across, red, oxblood red glazed pot. It stands at almost hip high. It's tall, it's magnificent. It's a showpiece. It's a piece of art by itself. I chose four peppers. The peppers I chose were uh, a, a hot waxed pepper, two jalapenos, and an Anaheim, which those are, are, are spicy. Those are, are zesty 
uh, peppers with some flavor. I don't, I don't like hot peppers where your mouth is just on fire and you can't taste anything. And sweet peppers, they should just have more capsaicin in them. I just like, I like spicy, zesty, zingy peppers. So those are my four peppers. I put one in each corner. This is a square pot. And then on the on the flat sides of the pot, I put this beautiful yellow with a, it almost looks like a sunset. It's a yellow and an orange petunia that flows. It's, it's a rambling or wave petunia. So I'll have this yellow overflowing the, the, the red with these four beautiful, pristine, glazed peppers coming up. And it is, it's picture worthy. It's beautiful. So I was proud of myself. I like doing that. I like putting those combinations together. It's therapeutic for me. So I, I lose track of time when I'm in my garden. So I, I purposely left my cell phone upstairs away where I couldn't even hear it ring. I put it on vibrate. And so you could have called me and I would not have cared. I think sometimes we just need to unplug. It gets so crazy busy and hectic. It's like a battery recharge. It's like, it just, it just, I get done and I'm going, I feel good. I'm ready to go to. So all morning on, when was that? Wednesday, I just gardened. Then I had a power you know, business meeting rah, down at the office restaurant rah, uh, in Prescott at 11.30. So I gardened from dawn until, yeah, okay, 10.30. I had to shower and get ready, get dressed up because it's like a power meeting. Rah. So, but, but that just helps me be nicer. It helps me think better. It takes us the stress out. My blood pressure lowers. And I think we need to do that more. We need to get the kids away from the games and, and the, the TV and the, the iPads and the, 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 the game controllers. We need to get them out and, and show them what connecting with plants can do. I think that's helpful. But it doesn't matter what I, I don't care about kids. My kids launched. It's therapy for me. I just feel better. <laughs> it's a good hobby. Now, I did readjust my timers. I got done planting. But I committed to quite a bit in the in the containers and, and the raised beds. And so I did reprogram my clocks. I've got two very large controllers with a lot in-ground valves. So everything is automated. All my irrigation is automated. Here's what I did. So the flower pots, I put them on for everyday watering for 10 minutes. I think for right now that's fine because it's still cool out. I almost went to every other day, but I thought, oh, I got too much new stuff. I got to go away for a couple days here. I'm going to commit to every day and monitor. As we get really hot, as we get closer to 90 degrees, I'll bump that up to every day, maybe 15 minutes. And they're coming on. Everything is adjusted to come on before 8 o'clock in the morning. So I want everything hydrated before the heat of the day gets to these, these new plants in the garden. The trees and shrubs, I am watering my established trees and shrubs two hours on drip irrigation. So it's, it comes on. I've got several drip emitters on each one. They come on every 10 days in the back because those are all natives. In fact, I might have gone to every 14. Now, I think I, maybe it was 12. Anyway, it's a week and a half. Call it a, Every week and a half, it waters for two hours. These are tough, you know, hardy native stuff in the back. The front yard are roses and high color butterfly bush and lots of things in color. There I watered once a week for two hours. Okay, that's trees and shrubs. My thyme lawn. So I've got a, a lawn that made out of herbal thyme, creeping thyme. I'm watering that for one hour every five days. Again, thyme lawns are pretty robust. They're very drought hardy beautiful. It's, it's starting to really fill in right now. So once every five days, and what I'll do is I'll monitor that and I might dump it down to five, four days, no more than that. Again, it's not a regular lawn. It shouldn't take as much water. I'm trying to reduce my water bill uh, by converting from regular fescue and, and bluegrass lawns to, to time. And that's what I'm adjusting to. My containers are 10, 10 minutes every day. Uh, the natives two hours every hour, week and a half, the lush stuff every every week for about two hours. There you go. That's how I, that's Ken Lane, I'm your friend. We're just leaning over the fence, talking about what's working in my backyard, and it will probably relate to you in your backyard as well. Be right back. <laughs> 